Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about our metabolic energy systems. We will help you understand how the body uses ATP, the various energy systems that we use, and why we use different energy systems. Let's get started. Our bodies are a bit like cars. In order to move and function, we need fuel to provide energy. Stored energy in our bodies is called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short. And it's the only energy currency our bodies can use. It contains a high energy bond made up of adenosine and three phosphate molecules. ATP can be broken down by an enzyme called ATPase to release energy. ATP is broken down into adenosine diphosphate, or ADP for short, leaving an inorganic phosphate along with the release of energy. However, unfortunately, ATP stores are limited, so ATP must be resynthesized in order for us to stay functioning. Resynthesis of ATP requires energy, meaning that we need to break down fuels that we eat and drink through a series of chemical reactions. The body has three different metabolic pathways or energy systems to convert fuels into fresh new ATP so we don't run out of energy. All three energy systems do not work independently, but instead work together to ensure we have a continual supply of energy. Depending on the intensity and the duration of an activity, a different energy system will be prominent. The first energy system we are interested in is the ATP PC system, which specialises in high intensity activity over short durations. Once all the stored ATP has been used up, the body can break down phosphocreatine, or PC for short, into a phosphate molecule, a creatine molecule, and some energy. This newly single phosphate molecule can then use this energy and combine with an ADP to reform ATP. This is the fastest and easiest way to resynthesize ATP. However, the major drawback to the ATP PC system is that the body only has about 8 to 10 seconds worth of PC stores. Once these have been used, the body will not be able to maintain this intensity and method of ATP resynthesis unless it stops and rests. This is why we can only sustain high intensity activities such as sprinting or jumping for short periods of time. Once all the stored ATP and PC has been used up, the body switches focus to a new source of energy, glycogen, which is stored in the muscles and the liver, broken down from carbohydrates that we have eaten. This process is called glycolysis and can occur anaerobically and aerobically. Glycogen gets broken down into glucose and then finally into a substance called pyruvate. This process creates about two ATP molecules and can only last approximately a couple of minutes of activity. Great. However, we still have to deal with the pyruvate. That's not gone anywhere yet. The fate of pyruvate can go one of two ways. If there is no oxygen present or is anaerobic, then the pyruvate is converted into lactic acid. But if there is oxygen present, or aerobic, then the pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA. Here, acetyl-CoA enters the gateway for the aerobic pathway, called the Krebs cycle, which we will get onto in a minute. Although anaerobic glycolysis is fairly effective at creating ATP, the build-up of lactic acid can result in having to stop exercising. This system is most commonly present during sports with varying moderate intensities, such as football or rugby. 
So glycolysis can happen with or without oxygen present, but it's the fate of the end product pyruvate that is determined by the availability of oxygen and ultimately how quickly ATP is resynthesized. The final energy system is the oxidative or aerobic system. After a few minutes of activity, there is now enough oxygen available to be able to make some ATP aerobically. With the newfound oxygen now present, then either fat can be broken down into fatty acids via beta oxidization, or pyruvate via glycolysis are converted into acetyl-CoA and they enter the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is basically a series of chemical reactions that keep breaking down molecules until it finally gets something it can use, which in this case is hydrogen ions. Approximately two ATP molecules are created from the Krebs cycle. Carbon dioxide is also released here but that heads to the lungs and we breathe it out. These hydrogen ions combine with enzymes called NAD and FAD to form NADH and FADH2 and enter another series of reactions called the electron transport chain. Approximately 32 ATP are produced at the end of this process along with some water. Now you may have noticed that we have produced significantly more ATP aerobically than anaerobically and have little to worry about in terms of waste products. However, as we exercise, oxygen is not always readily available, which is why this energy system requires some patience to get our energy rewards. It's not the quickest energy system to produce ATP, but once you get your reward, it is definitely worth the wait. This is why this system primarily deals with low intensity activities over long durations, such as long distance cycling or a marathon. It also deals with functional bodily demands, such as growing hair or regulating body temperature. I know there's a lot to take in here, so let's take a look at a summary. The ATP PC system. It's very fast at energy production. Its energy source is creatine phosphate. The amount of ATP produced is very limited, but there are no waste products. It can last for up to 8 to 10 seconds, but the intensity produced will be high. This system can recover from about 30 seconds to 4 minutes. Due to being able to quickly produce high intensity work, the ATP PC system predominantly deals with high intensity activities over short durations such as sprinting or jumping. When it comes to energy production, glycolysis is fast. The energy source is glycogen. The amount of ATP produced is limited and it has waste products of lactic acid. You can get one to three minutes worth of energy production and it will be between moderate and high intensity. The recovery time for glycolysis can be anywhere between 20 minutes and two hours. Glycolysis predominantly deals with activities with varying moderate intensities, such as football or rugby. The oxidative system is slow to produce energy. The energy sources are glycogen and fat. However, it has an unlimited amount of ATP that can be produced. The waste products are carbon dioxide and water, and you can get up to two hours worth of energy production. However, the intensity will be low. The recovery time is completely variable, depending on what you eat and what you drink as part of your recovery. The oxidative system's ability to produce low intensity work for long periods of time make it the predominant system used for long endurance activities, such as a long distance cycle. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to also visit our website www.
sportsciencehub.com for more videos on everything you need to know about sports science. See you soon.